Hi, my name is Josh, and today I'll be teaching you about control flow with Python. Control flow is a fairly simple topic. Control flow simply means controlling the flow of the program's execution to get the desired behavior or result. In the programs we've seen up until now, there's been a series of statements that Python always executes in the same order. What happens if we want to change the flow of how it works? For example, if you want the program to make a decision and do different things depending on different situations, such as printing good morning or good evening, depending on the time of day. So now we know what control flow is, but how do we implement this? Python provides us with various tools for that, don't worry. In this tutorial, we'll cover if else, loops, break, and continue statements, and uh, a last pass statement. Let's look at the if else statement. As you can see, when we arrive at the condition block, the condition is first checked to see whether it's true or false. If the condition is true, then the if code is executed. Otherwise, if the condition is false, then the else code is executed. An if else statement can either be true or false based on the Boolean condition. It's used when we have to make a choice. So, for example, in this code, passing marks is 50. As you can see, if the marks entered is greater than or equal to 50, then the program will print student passes. Otherwise, it'll print student failed the subject. Simple as that. Next, let's talk about the if elif else statement, which takes the if else statement to the next level. Let's try to understand this using a flowchart. Here you can see if boolean expression 1 is true, then the if block is executed. Otherwise, it'll check the elif block, um, so boolean expression number 2. And this repeats over and over. If all the expressions are false, then the else block is executed. The elif statement allows you to check multiple expressions for true and execute a block of code as soon as one of the conditions evaluates to true. This will become more clear on the next slide. Let's look at this example. Here you can see if entered input marks are greater than or equal to 90, then grade A is printed. Otherwise, else, if marks are greater than or equal to 75, then grade B is printed. Else, if marks are greater than or equal to 50, then grade C is printed. And if all the statements are false, so if marks are less than 50, then grade F is printed. Now you're basically a pro at this thing. Try exploring it by yourself. If you think you're a pro now, try doing this quiz. Now let's talk about loops. Why in the world would we use loops? Well, loops are used when we need a piece of code to execute multiple times. Rather than typing the same thing again and again, we can reduce the redundancy and increase the efficiency of the program using a loop. Isn't that cool? As we can see here in an example, if you have zero apples and you want four apples, four and while loops can be used and come to the rescue. Now that you know what a loop is, let's talk about while loops first. A while loop has two parts, the condition and then the conditional code that it contains. The condition takes the form of a boolean. A while loop only executes its code while the condition is true. If the condition becomes wrong or false for any instance of the loop, the program will pass to the line immediately following the loop. One thing you should know about Python is that it handles blocks of code differently from Java, C++, or JavaScript. Instead of wrapping curly brackets around the code you want to include in a loop, all statements with the same level of indent are considered to be part of a single block of code. Indentation is very important. Before moving on to for loops, we'll need to understand what an iterable is. I hope you're paying attention because this is where things get a bit tricky. In Python, iterables are objects which could be treated as sequences such as lists, arrays, and range objects. The form of iterable you'll be learning about today is the range object. Each range ob object contains a list of integers from least to greatest that span from a starting value to the stopping value minus 1, increasing or decreasing by a set number each time. It's quite simple to create a range object with a given size. Here, I've set up three different range objects. The first is a simple list, five integers long. If you aren't familiar with zero indexed lists, Python, like many programming languages, starts counting from zero instead of one. That being said, this range starts at zero and keeps counting up until it has filled up a list that's the preferred size. Second, it's slightly more interesting than a list. It starts at five and counts upward, but it stops right before it reaches 10. Up until the third list, you've seen ascending lists. Here is one that descends. As you can see, it starts at 10, but then increases by negative 2 each time, and stops just before its value would be less than or equal to 5. Whew, we made it! Now that you know what iterables are, this should be smooth sailing ahead. Alright, 
For loops are different from while loops in that they don't need something to be true in order to run. All you need is a defined iterable, whether it be a list, array, or range object, and you can create your own for loop. Creating a for loop is quite simple. When y is the iterable you'd like to count over, and x is what you'd like to call the specific object in y, all you need to type is for x in y, a colon, and then you're set. Now test yourself and try to do this question. Now it's time to learn something about the break statement. What if you want to come out of a loop after execution of a block of code? The break statement is the answer. The break statement, like in C, breaks out of the smallest enclosing for or while loop. Loop statements may have an else clause. It is executed when the loop terminates through the exhaustion of the list with for, or when the condition becomes false with while, but not when the loop is terminated by a break statement. This is exemplified by the following loop, which searches for prime numbers. Here comes the continue statement after the break statement. Brace yourself. The continue statement, also borrowed from C, continues with the next iteration of the loop. The following program finds even numbers. Here, when we encounter a continue statement, the compiler directly goes to the loop definition. Congrats! One last step before you become a control flow master. The last topic is the pass statement. The pass statement does nothing. It's used when a statement is required syntactically. The pass statement is also useful in places when your code will go there eventually, but it hasn't been written yet. Above, you can see how the pass statement functions in a for loop. 